Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I will begin uh, our lecture for reaction engineering today. So uh, since last week we already done on the introductory of the course. So today we will begin uh, chapter one. So chapter one, uh, not that difficult, but chapter one is very important. As I told you before, uh, what you learn in chapter one will be used in chapter two, chapter three, and six, uh, subsequently. So uh, make sure you understand. Uh, hopefully you understand what we're going to learn today uh, so that we can use for the following chapter. Okay, so before I begin, let me share my screen first. Okay, so uh, for chapter one, we will learn the basic first. You will learn the basic uh, things that you will actually uh, encounter very much later in chapter two and subsequently, right? So in chapter one, uh, hold on, uh, okay, the chapter one, the three things that you will learn first is the reaction rate. We will start to understand uh, what is reaction rate and why do we need to know reaction rate when it comes to reaction engineering. Uh, second, about mole balance. Okay, you probably have heard a little bit about mole balance, but this mole balance is to explain uh, what we call as the main equation that is used in the design of reactor. So later you will see from one equation, from one very general equation, this equation will be somewhat modified and tweak when we are designing reactors. So you have to understand reactors have characteristics, different characteristics uh, uh, as well as the reaction. So when your reaction is happening, okay, so when your reaction is diverse as well, uh, the equation also will be modified and tweaked according to the reaction and according to the reactor. And then kalau sempat, I will also explain to you about the types of reactor that we're going to learn uh, throughout the semesters. Okay, so first of all, we will start with the very basic chemical reaction. So when do when did a chemical reaction occurs, or how do we know that a chemical reaction has occurred? So we can actually define it as when a chemical species lost its chemical identity and a new compound is formed. Or in a simpler word, if I put in into the reactor, like say A, uh, reactant A or raw material A, and after a certain time, I get a completely new compound, meaning it's no longer A, it becomes B, it becomes C, so on and so forth. Once a new compound is formed, then I can say that a reaction has taken place. So although the word reaction sounds easy, but there are many types of reaction. Okay, so the very common ones, the four types of main, four types of chemical reaction will be one, synthesis. So you know the word synthesis, right? It means you want to form a new compound or you want to form a compound. Uh, synthesis is one type of a chemical reaction. We have decomposition, okay? We have single replacement, we have double replacement. So these are the common reactions that you will probably see. And then we we'll talk about designing of reactor. Uh, we will address these types of reaction, okay? All right. So next one is let's go towards the engineering side of it. Okay, so tadi yang explain for reaction two is the chemistry of it. So you understand the different types of reaction. Now we're talking about the engineering side of this kind of reaction. Okay, so from the very basic one, you have to understand a few concepts, right? In a reaction, okay, you always have a reactant, you have a product. So the reactant will disappear. Why the reactant disappear? Because the reactant will react. So untuk reaction ni berlaku, that it must have two things that happen at the same time. First will be the disappearance of the reactant because the reactant has reacted. And the same time, the product will appear or it will be formed. Okay, so bila kami ingat konsep, something must disappear, the raw material, the raw material must disappear or reactant or reacted in order for the product to be formed. Okay, so then when we talk about okay disappearance, formation, you know that in engineering, everything must be quantified. Okay, so much like chemistry, physics, biology, it's more of a qualified things, it's a statement. But when it comes to engineering, this statement must be quantified. So I said something must disappear, something must be formed. But how do we quantitatively describe this or how do we measure this? So this formation or disappearance 
can be uh, measured using what we call as reaction rate or rate of reaction. Okay, sama pun. Aku tadi sama. Ada rate of reaction or reaction rate. Okay, then now let me teach you. Sometimes in engineering, certain phrases, you can actually guess what it means based on the phrase. Okay, so when you hear the word reaction rate, when you hear the word rate, kada, it means it must be something per time. So later when you but when you do calculation when you see that uh, let's say you are asked to calculate the reaction rate it must come to your mind terus kalau rate tu dia mesti something per time must be something your calculation if you see your unit tu bukan per time bukan per hour ke bukan per second ke bukan per day you know your calculation is not right anymore because kalau we talk about rate dia mesti per time okay right so that's first thing understanding second reaction rate ni pula it can be measured in two different ways. Either rate of formation or rate of disappearance. So it depends on what do you want to know. Do you want to know the rate of disappearance ke? You want to know the rate of formation. Uh, both also is considered as reaction rate or rate of reaction. Okay, so that's first concept. Reaction rate. Okay, first concept dia, it must be something over time. And this reaction rate pun boleh measured in two different ways. Rate of disappearance or rate of formation. Okay, so next one. Remember I told you, since it's a uh, reaction rate, it must be something per time, right? So in terms of a reaction rate, it actually will be the concentration of your reactant or product per time. Okay, so after this, when you see the word reaction rate, you know that dia punya dimension dia mesti concentration per time. So, you know, right? Concentration is normally mole per volume. So, reaction rate akan jadi mole per volume time. So, that's the dimension. If you talk about unit, it can be mole per liter second. It can be kilo mole per dm cube uh, hour, so on and so forth. But dimension dia, kalau reaction rate, it must be concentration per time. Okay, so you are talking about SI, kalau you're talking about SI unit, definitely is mole per liter second. You're talking about American engineering unit, it will be pound mole per feet cube uh, second. Okay, so after this, when you see reaction rate, because what I'm trying to teach you is sometimes uh, that's how you can check whether what you are calculating is right or wrong. So let's say you put calculation panjang, panjang panjang, you know that you're calculating reaction rate. If you see your final answer to unit dia is not uh, the unit or the dimension is not concentration per time, you know that you need to check back. Must be somewhere you put calculation to salah. So that's also one way of checking engineering calculation by looking at the unit. You know kan, unit, a unit is to know unit, then you know the dimension. Then you can guess whether your answer is right or wrong. Okay, so reaction rate, it must be concentration per time. So concentration ni pula, concentration can be concentration of product, concentration of reactant. So let's say you measure reaction rate of product, it will be concentration of the product over time. If you're talking about rate of reaction of the reactant, it will be the concentration of the reactant per time. Meaning, in other words, rate of reaction to we can know how much the concentration changes with time. So let's say kamu katakan, you know like in a, katakan in reactor, let's say I put in initially 10 mole per liter of A. So 10, 10 mole per liter of A, let's say in 5, uh, let's say in 1 minute, this 10 mole per liter become 8 mole per liter. Okay, so the rate of reaction, you can calculate lah from the concentration. So, you know the concept, right? Uh, kalau dia adalah irreversible reaction, nanti kamu akan belajar pula. Uh, this, this is a little bit complex. So far, you will learn, you will learn irreversible. Means reaction in one direction. Means, let's say A forms B. Okay, so it always A forms B, A forms B. But later in chapter 4, you will learn reversible pula. So, reversible, pemahaman dia jadi complex sikit. Sebab reversible means A can form B, B can form A. Okay, but until now, until chapter 4, I will only talk about irreversible. Means, a during the reaction, okay, let's say you have raw material A, you form product B, during the reaction, A will decrease. Concentration of A will decrease with time. So why concentration of A decrease with time? Because A is consumed. So A consumed, concentration A decrease with time. 
So naturally, concentration of B, the product will increase with time. So why concentration of B increase with time? Because B is formed. So A disappear, concentration A decrease. B is formed, concentration of B will increase with time. Okay, all right. So that's the concept. Next, when we talk about rate of reaction pula, as I told you, other rate of formation, rate of disappearance, kan? However, usually when we want to design reactor, so later kita akan belajar how to design reactor, the equation will have this rate of reaction. Okay, so in the design equation, usually the rate of reaction tu, kita akan guna rate of disappearance of reactant A. Okay, so you must understand dalam class, I always use example A, B, C, D. But later when you see the real uh, chemical reaction and so on, it's no longer A, B, C, D. It's the real compound. So you must understand apa itu masuk dia A. Okay. So let's say if your reaction only have one reactant, so naturally that will be your A lah. Okay, your reactant, kalau satu reactant, itu adalah A kamu. Means rate of reaction kita berdasarkan that one reactant punya rate. So means it's law, it's concentration, changes of concentration with time. But sometimes you know that reaction will have two reactant kan? So macam ni, which one will be A, which one will be B. So kalau you have two reactant, the the reactant the one with the limiting reactant. So kamu, I think you learn in CPP reaction when you have more than one reactant. Usually you have one limiting reactant. Uh, one is the limiting reactant, meaning reactant tu yang akan habis dulu dalam tindak balas. You have two reactant. Tidak balas berlaku. Usually one will be limiting reactant. Means limiting reactant tu yang akan habis dulu. So once the limiting reactant finish, the reaction can no longer takes place. So that limiting reactant will be your A. Okay. But you don't worry. Let's say dalam soalan test, dalam soalan exam, I will specify clearly which reactant is your A. Or if it's not stated in the question, you can see the chemical equation. Okay. Uh, you will be given the chemical equation. The first compound in the chemical equation is usually your A. Okay, or your main limiting reactant of which the calculation is based on. Kenapa ni penting? Sebab nanti we kena establish mana satu yang A. Sebab calculation kita, design reactor kita mesti berdasarkan satu reactant sahaja. So usually it will be limiting reactant. So kalau dalam soalan, kalau tak ada or if you refer to journals tak ada, usually the first compound in the chemical equation is the limiting reactant. Okay, first. Right, so... To recap, rate of reaction, although can be in terms of rate of disappearance, rate of formation, but when we want to talk about design of reactor, it must be based on rate of disappearance of reactant A. So, lepas ni, bila saya cakap A, kamu kena faham itu maksudnya reactant A. Okay, then, reaction rate pula, that's why design reaction, reactor ni uh, complex because I told you design reactor based on reaction rate, right? And this reaction rate is also influenced by many things. It based uh, influenced by concentration, temperature, pressure, and catalyst as well. So you, whenever you change one of these condition, rate of reaction dah berubah. Rate of reaction dah berubah design reactor pun berubah. So that's why it become complex in that sense. Anything that you change in the reaction will influence reaction rate, will influence the design of your reactor. So so let's say kalau reactor tu dah design means kamu akan tengok your performance of the reactor akan bertukar, will not be consistent due to the changes of this reaction, uh, the condition in the reaction. Okay. So next one, Okay, example of unit. So, actually, tadi saya dah bagi dah kan, contoh this uh, example of units for rate of reaction. Regardless rate of disappearance ke, rate of formation ke, dimension dia, concentration per time. So, unit dia ikut lah. So, unit dia can be mole per liter second, kilo mole per uh, dm cube hour, so on and so forth. So, why I stress on units is because, first of all, you know right, uh, in engineering, Number means nothing with unit. So by right, by now, in semester 4, 
especially in reaction, when you do calculation, your final answer must be with units. Okay, kalau you bagi jawapan akhir without units, I will not accept it because in engineering, in anything that you know is engineering, numbers are nothing without units. So that's why I'm training you now to make sure you familiarize with units as well as because as to you, Units is also a way for you to check your calculation. So let's say kalau kamu kira-kira-kira, kamu dapat unit akhir tu bukan unit concentration per time. So it already tells you definitely something is already wrong somewhere. So perhaps the equation yang kamu guna salah ke, uh, kamu salah uh, rearrange back the equation ke, so on and so forth. So get uh, knowing the unit is also a powerful way to check your calculation. Right. So next one. Now we talk about understanding the units and how do we write it. Okay, uh, remember to you, rate of reaction are the dual, right? So rate of formation, rate of disappearance. Okay, so in order to uh, differentiate this, okay, we will have a symbol. Rate of reaction cannot be every time you will write, right? Rate of reaction, rate of disappearance, rate of formation. It's too long. So we will abbreviate it into symbol. So we use R. R is to signify rate. However, rate, I told you, are the dual, right? Disappearance and formation. So how do we differentiate R for disappearance, R for formation? Is by having the positive and negative sign on the R. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so let's see now. Uh, rate of reaction pun, dia ada dua benda. Kamu kena faham formation, disappearance. And this rate is very specific to the compound. Meaning, kamu kamu tak boleh just tulis positive R, negative R. Kamu kena tulis positive R subscript A. Meaning, refers to the rate for A, reactant A. Similarly, let's say you want to do, you want to calculate the rate for B. So, you must do R subscript B or R subscript C, R subscript D, depending on which compound that you want to measure the rate. Okay, so that's why in this case, I do first for A. Let's say now my reaction A produce B. I want to do the rate for uh, reactant A. So you will see my R will have a subscript A. Okay. Second pula, positive and negative. To this differentiate rate of disappearance, rate of formation, I will have a negative and positive sign. Okay. So what does it mean? Right. If you have a negative RA, okay, Negative tu means disappear. Kalau kamu nak faham konsep dia, pemahaman dia, dia akan ada dalam reaction, mesti something disappear, something is formed. Baru reaction bermula, baru akan berlaku. So, you know, kalau di disappear, means the concentration or the uh, reactant tu akan berkurangan, right? It will become negative. So, that's why rate of disappearance, we put it as negative R. So, if it's a rate of disappearance of reactant A, negative R E. So, on the other side, vice versa, kalau rate of formation, formation kan, something is being formed, something is adding to the system. So, it becomes a positive thing. So, it becomes positive R. So, if I'm talking about rate of formation of A, it becomes positive R A. So, kalau kata kamu nak cakap pasal uh, rate, of uh, rate of formation of Product B, positive RB. Rate of formation of product C, positive RC. Rate of formation of product D, positive RD. So, positive R is to, to uh, signify rate of formation. So, negative R is to signify rate of disappearance. So, lepas ni bila kamu tengok negative R, kamu dah faham, oh, itu kadar kehilangan, rate of disappearance. You see positive R, oh, itu kadar pembentukan, rate of formation. Okay, then kamu kena tengok, subscript dia apa? A, B, C, D. So, katakan if you have the real reaction, katakan reaction kamu nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas to produce ammonia, kan? So, you will have rate of disappearance of nitrogen gas, negative R and 2. Katakan rate of disappearance of hydrogen gas, negative R, H2, subscript. Negative R, NH3, meaning the rate of disappearance of ammonia. So, similarly, nak cakap pasal rate of formation pun boleh. Positive R, N2, positive R, H2, positive R, NH3. All this means rate of formation, but specifically to which compound. Okay. So, first thing first is about the R, positive dengan negative R. Okay. So, now... Yang saya cakap pasal pertanyaan ketika R tu adalah on the left hand side. Now let me go to the right hand side. Rate ni adalah nombor kan kita kata quantify. So it will be a number. Okay so 
this number pula can be positive or negative. Okay, so saya panggil balik. Positif R, negatif R, masuk dia. Kalau negatif R, rate of disappearance. Positif R, rate of formation. Okay, so this rate pula will have numbers. Kan sebab dia concentration per time, it will have numbers. These numbers pula can be negative or positive. Okay, sebab tu kamu, dia macam pening kan? Ada positif R, ada negatif R. Then number dia pun boleh jadi negatif atau positif. So, how do we know the numbers are negative or positive? You have to understand the role of the species in the reaction. Okay. So, let me start with simple one. Kita buat A dahulu. Okay. Right. So, now, let's say you want to measure rate of disappearance of A. So, become negative RA kan? Bila kamu dengar rate of disappearance jadi mesti negative R. Kalau untuk reactant A, negative RA. Okay. Kita nak cari, we want to find rate of disappearance of A. Then you check the equation, the chemical equation. You investigate the role of A in the reaction. So you can see here the role of A. A does disappear. Sebab A ada reactor, right? A disappear. Okay. Saya nak cari kadar rate of disappearance. And in this case, A do disappear. It agrees to one another. The number become Positive. So, it become positive 10. Let's say 10. So, it become positive 10. So, usually kalau positive uh, is optional. You write or you don't write the positive also is fine. Okay, we know that it means positive. So, that's why it become positive 10. Okay, so now, part yang confuse sikit, let me go to the rate of formation yang sebelah kanan ni. Okay, rate of formation of A, you will write as what? Positive RA. And positive RA means rate of formation of A. However, you tengok balik, in this case, A is re reactant. A does not form. A disappear. Tapi saya nak kadar formation. Since this two doesn't agree, then the number becomes a negative number. So, it become, let's say, negative 10. Faham? So, maksudnya, positive negative R to signify rate of disappearance, rate of formation. Number dia positive or negative depends on the role of the species in the reaction. So let's say you want to find the rate of disappearance in this case for A and A does disappear, agree to one another, the number is a positive. On the other hand, I want to find rate of formation but my A does not form, my A is disappear, does not agree to one another, the number become negative number. So, that is for case of A. Okay. Now, we go slightly complicated. Kita check B pula. Okay. Dalam case ni, A form B. Means B is a product. So, dalam example yang kedua ni, sekarang, my reaction is A is the reactant, B is a product. So, for the case of B pun, I can find its rate of disappearance and rate of formation juga. Okay. Tak semestinya hanya untuk A. Untuk sebarang spesies dalam tindak balas, I can find its rate of formation, its rate of disappearance. Tapi you must be very careful about the sign. Okay, so let us start all over again. I want to find rate of disappearance of product B. So kalau kamu tengok, kamu ingat kalau rate of disappearance, confirm negative R. Since this is product B, negative RB. To signify, you want to find the rate of disappearance for species B. Negative RB. Okay. So, rate of disappearance of B. Then you check the role of B in the reaction. B is form. Kamu nak cari kadar kehilangan. Tapi dalam tindak balas tu, B is form. It does not agree to one another. The number becomes a negative number. So, for example, let's say negative 10. So, kamu tengok tak perbezaan dia? Kamu kena faham perbezaan positif R, negatif R. That's on the left, on the right hand side. The left hand side, the number pun can be negative or positive depending on the role of the species. So, now I go to one more. Rate of formation of B. So, rate of formation of B, you know, formation, rate of formation become positive R, B. Okay, so nak cari rate of formation. And in this reaction, B is formed because B is product. They agree to one another, the number becomes a positive number. So, for example, in this case, positive 10. Okay, so that's 
understanding until reactant A, reactant B. Okay, now, saya kena pergi a little bit more complex. Study reaction A produce B. Okay, let's say now reaction saya dah bertukar. I have two reactant now. Okay, so I have reactant A, reactant B. I produce product C and product D. So, kamu jangan confuse. Example tadi was when I have one reactant A to produce one product B. Now, I change. Let's say I have two reactant of A and B. I want to get two product of C and D. So, how do we do the rate of reaction? Okay. So, similarly, we can find the rate of uh, disappearance, rate of formation for reactant A and B, product C and D. So, for reactant A and B, right? Rate of disappearance dia akan jadi apa? Pos negative RA or negative RB, kan? Sebab rate of disappearance untuk A, negative RA. Rate of disappearance of reactant B, negative RB. Then, what happened to the number? What happened to the operative or the number? Positive ke negative? Okay, sebab we, we find rate of disappearance. And in this reaction, A and B does disappear. It agree to one another the number becomes a positive number. So, positive 10. Let's say positive, uh, let's say it's 10, so it becomes positive 10. Okay, so then, terbalik pula, rate of formation of A and B. So, become what? Positive RA, positive RB. So, positive RA, positive RB, kadar formation, kadar pembentukan, rate of formation. But in my reaction, both A and B is disappear. So, they don't agree to one another. The number becomes a negative number. So, for example, negative 10. Okay, so now you can see uh, negative RB is positive 10. Positive RB, negative 10. Kamu nampak tak perbezaan dia bila contoh tadi B adalah produk. In this example, B adalah reactant. Okay, sebab tu kamu tengok number dia. Positive and negative tu, kamu really need to investigate the role of the reactant in the reaction. Okay, sebab tu as I said, reaction, that's the complexity of this course. Uh, reaction tu diverse. So, kamu kena betul-betul faham how it changes according to the reaction. Okay, so now let me go to C and D. Katakan dalam example ni, C and D is product. C and D is from. So, rate of disappearance of C and D. So, negative RC, negative RD. The number will be a negative number. Why? Sebab rate of disappearance of C and D. But C and D does not disappear. They are from. They don't agree to one another. The number is a negative number. So, then rate of formation pula. Rate of formation of C and D. So, positive RC, positive RD, right? And C and D is indeed being formed. They are product. They agree to one another. The number is a positive number. So, for example, positive 10. So, positive RC, positive RD is uh, positive 10. But negative RC, negative RD is negative 10. Okay, so you might ask me a question. Kenapa kena tahu benda ni? Okay, first of all, sebab we need to know rate of reaction. Kita, kita nak tahu rate of reaction. One thing lah. Okay, second, kita kena tahu negative RA sebab nak guna later untuk design reactor. Third, why do I need to know this? Sometimes, let's say from journal or let's say you have, uh, you want to learn about a new reaction. Unfortunately, you were not given information on the chemical equation. Kamu cari-cari, kamu tak dapat chemical equation dia. Instead, you are given information in terms of this rate. So, when you are given information in terms of this rate, actually, you can deduce sama ada compound tu product atau reactant. So, maksud saya macam ni. Okay, contohnya macam ni eh. Alright. Let's say kamu tak tahu reaction kamu tu... ah. Uh, Kamu tak tahu A, kamu tahu ada A, B, C and D. Tapi kamu tak tahu mana satu reactant, mana satu produk. Kamu tahu ada A, B, C, D dia. Tidak pada ada A, ada B, ada C, ada D. Tapi tak tahu produk ataupun reactant. Okay, so for example, kamu dapat information yang B. Kamu, they are given that the rate of formation of B, okay, positive RB adalah positive 10. 
So it tells you, okay, kalau rate of formation dia uh, positif, number dia positif, means B is a product. Sebab dia, untuk kadar pembentukan and, uh, and the number is positif, meaning that most likely, bukan most likely, definitely B is a product in the reaction. So then on the other hand, katakan pula kamu dapat rate of formation of B ni, kadar pembentukan B ni, kamu dapat pada literature is negative number, negative 10. So it tells you, okay, kadar pembentukan B, tapi number dia negatif. So it tell me B is a reactant in the reaction. So sometimes you can use this rate of reaction information to deduce your uh, chemical equation as well. Okay, right. Done. Okay, now next pula, understanding the relationship between tadi kamu dah belajar kan positif RA negatif RA positif RB negatif RB so on and so forth now to understand the relationship between all these okay kenapa kita kena faham right so as I told you before kan rate of reaction normally in the design of reactor kita akan guna based on negative RA rate of disappearance of A in fact nanti bila kita uh, when you are uh, when you let's say you have a new reaction okay kita nak deduce uh, rate of reaction dia from experimental data kita akan cari minus RA dulu kita takkan kita takkan cari positif RB negatif RB kita akan cari negatif RA dulu from experimental data from this negative RA you can get the rate for other species okay again i repeat Usually rate of reaction, although I tell you other rate of disappearance, rate of formation, and you can find for many species, but usually what you find from literature or when you do your own experiment, nanti kita akan belajar dalam chapter 5, from own experiment, kita akan cari dulu minus RE. Experimental data tu memang the equations all is to give you first to find minus RE. And from this minus RA, baru kita cari species yang lain. Okay. So, how, how to do this? It's very easy. Okay. Let's say now you already know the minus RA. Remember, minus RA itu number kan? So, let's say you already know the minus RA. You want to find the other species. Okay. It is based on the chemical equation and the importance of the stoichiometric coefficient. So, you have probably learned before stoichiometric coefficient. Kejap eh. Saya tak tahu pukul berapa. Okay. Uh, the stoichiometric coefficient in a chemical equation, you have what we call as stoichiometric coefficient. Or in a simpler term, the number in front of the chemical species in the chemical equation. So, for contohnya, let's say 1A produce 2B. So, that 1 and 2 is your stoichiometric coefficient. So, this rate of reaction is based on this uh, co uh, stoichiometric coefficient punya perkadaran, the, co the relativity of this uh, stoichiometric coefficient. So, for example, let's say now kamu dah tahu minus RA, let's say kamu dah journal, daripada experiment, kamu dah tahu minus RA, kamu nak cari minus RB and positive RB. So, let's say you already know minus RA, I want to find positive RB and negative RB. So, how do I do it? Okay, let's say positive RB dulu. Okay, so positive RB Kamu jangan lupa dua benda. Okay, first of all, kata kamu kena ingat nombor tu dulu positif ke negatif. Okay, so let's say I want to find positif RB, rate of formation of B. And in this example, B is a product. So the number become positive. Okay, operation number tu kamu kena betul-betul ingat. Dia positif ke negatif? Betul-betul kena ingat berdasarkan the role of the species. Kalau nak cari rate of formation and B is formed, so the number become positive. So, positive how much? Positive B per A. B per A is the stoichiometric coefficient in the chemical equation. So, B yang B kecil ni is stoichiometric coefficient for species B. And the small a is a stoichiometric coefficient for the uh, compound A. So, it become positive B per A multiply with minus RA kamu. So, let's say your minus, let's say your minus RA is 10. Let's say your B, let's say direction is 1A produce 1B. Okay, so it become positive 1 per 1 multiply with 10. You get positive RB as positive 10. Let's see. Nanti saya akan bagi contoh yang lebih uh, jelas. Okay, but it must be based on the number two positive or negative first. 
then the stoichiometric coefficient punya perkadaran and then the multiply with the minus RE. With the understanding, kamu dah tahu berapa minus RE tu. Okay. Then, next, nak cari minus RB. So, to find minus RB, remember, right? Minus RB tu means what? Rate of disappearance of B. So, rate of disappearance of B, in this example, B product, B is form. They don't agree to one another. The number has a negative sign. Okay, negative. Then, don't forget, multiply with B per A again, stoichiometric coefficient dia. So, B is a stoichiometric coefficient for compound B in the chemical equation. A, small a, is a stoichiometric coefficient of the compound A in the chemical equation. Then, multiply with minus RA. So, kalau saya tanya kamu, minus RA itu positif ke negatif? So, kalau kamu lupa, nak minus RA itu nombor dia positif ke negatif, ingat balik. Minus RA. Rate of disappearance of A. So, A will always be reactant. Sebab tu kita dahkan, saya dah ingat kamu, A itu adalah limiting reactant, will always be reactant. So, negative RA definitely is a positive number. Okay, so, remember, minus RA itu nombor dia sentiasa positif. Tapi, positif RB, negatif RB, nombor dia positif ke negatif, kamu kena tahu and decide yourself when you put the operation. Okay. So next one is now we become a bit complex when B is the reactant. Tadi contoh tadi adalah B adalah produk. In this example now we have two reactant, reactant A, reactant B. So biasanya kenapa saya kena emphasize sebab uh, reactant uh, species B ni nak kena student confused sebab kadang You know, Alvalas, B reactant, kejap B product. So, kamu kena faham how it changes according to the reaction. Okay, so let's say in this case now, I have two reactant, two product, and I know minus Ra, I want to find the positive R, negative R for other species. Okay, so kalau nak cari untuk reactant B, okay, reactant B. Tadi example product B, example ni reactant B. So, it become, let's say, rate of formation. So, Positif RB. So, positif RB equals to the number pula negatif ke positif. Sebab kadar pembentukan rate of formation of B and B is a reactant. In this example, dalam contoh ni B adalah reactant. So, rate of formation B reactant, B disappear. They don't agree to one another. The number will have a negative sign. So, negative Multiply with B per A, the stoichiometric coefficient ratio, multiply with minus RE. And then next one, uh, minus RB, rate of disappearance of B. So, rate of disappearance of B, minus RB, saya cakap minus RB. The number pula, it will become because rate of disappearance of B. B in this example is a reactant. B does disappear. They agree to one another, the number become positive. So, positive B per A, stoichiometric coefficient. Again, multiply with minus RE. Okay, so let's say kamu dah tahu minus RE. Okay, katakan soalan nak cari kadar uh, rate of formation. So, kamu kena faham. Okay, rate of formation of B. Okay, nombor dia jadi negatif sebab B adalah reactant. So, don't forget dah number negatif. Don't forget multiply B per A, stoichiometric coefficient. Then multiply with minus RE. So next one, let's see we find for C and D. Okay, so to find for C and D, sama konsep. Rate of disappearance, rate of formation. Okay, so C and D adalah produk. Okay, so rate of formation will be positive RC, positive RD. Okay, kamu jangan confuse. Positif, negatif R tu bergantung kepada apa yang kamu nak cari. If you want to find rate of formation, positive R. Nak cari rate of disappearance, negatif R. Then kamu kena kisah pula, yang number tu pula boleh jadi negatif atau positif depending on the role of the species. Okay, so come back to here. Rate of formation of C and D become positive RC, positive RD. So kamu dah tulis lah kan? Okay, equals to number dia pula. Okay, dalam number dia, C kita nak cari rate of formation. Okay, and C and D is product. In this example, means C and D is form. They agree to one another the number becomes a positive number. And then, don't forget, 
multiply with the stoichiometric coefficient. Kena sentiasa multiply dengan stoichiometric coefficient sebab the rate ni dia ikut perkadaran stoichiometric. So it become uh, you multiply with C per A. Kalau cari untuk spesies C, so you multiply with C per A. C is the stoichiometric coefficient for compound C in the chemical equation over A is the stoichiometric coefficient for compound A in the chemical equation. So D, uh, sorry, then multiply with minus RE. Okay, so D pun sama. Nak cari positive RD, rate of formation of D. D is indeed being formed since D is a product, become positive D per A. Okay, D, uh, the small D is the stoichiometric coefficient of compound D in the chemical equation over A multiply with minus RE. Okay, then terbalik lagi. Nak cari rate of disappearance pula. So, whenever you see rate of disappearance, confirm negative R. So, kalau for species C, negative RC. For species D, negative RD. Then next pula, equals to number tu, positive negative, kamu kena decide accordingly. So, nak cari rate of disappearance untuk C and D. But in this example, C and D product, they are formed. They don't agree to one another. The number is a negative number. Okay, so then multiply with stoichiometric coefficient and multiply with minus RE. Okay, so dia tak susah. Tapi students get a little bit confused when the reaction tu saya tukar sikit. Oh, I tweak a little bit. Especially B lah. Kadang-kadang B boleh jadi produk, B boleh jadi reactant. So you have to understand that. Then the positive R, negative R kamu kena faham. The next one is the number. Number tu negatif ke positif pun kamu kena faham how it changes according to the reaction. Okay. Then next, let's us try one question. Okay, so for example, reaction dia, you have 2A reacting with 1B to produce 2C and 1D. Okay, so lepas ni, when you are doing question for reaction, make sure you really check the chemical equation. So, Make sure you check stoichiometric coefficient dia betul atau tidak. Bukan betul means you check that you use the correct stoichiometric coefficient. So, kadang-kadang reaction ni, uh, the problem is, the danger is, dia soalan yang, uh, there are series of questions. Okay, so let's say kalau part pertama tu, usually yang ni adalah part pertama. So, kalau tengok part pertama ni, kamu salah tengok stoichiometric coefficient, kamu dah salah the entire questions, you know. So, you might have 25 marks, but you are wrong. Let's say you are wrong at the very first step, you will be wrong the entire step. Means the entire 25 marks you will not get because perhaps you might wrong at the very first step. So, reaction ni tak boleh buat salah kat mana-mana part, especially the the early part, the main part, ah uh, the early part. Kalau early part tu salah, memang most likely memang satu soalan tu akan salah. Okay, so in this question, dia kata 2A react with 1B to produce 2C and 1D. Okay, so miss reactant dia A and B, product dia C and D. Okay, dia beri rate of disappearance of A as 10 mole per liter minute. So after this, bila kamu tengok rate of disappearance of A, kamu tahu terus, oh, negative RE. Sebab kenapa negative R? Rate of disappearance. Kenapa negative RE? Rate of disappearance of A. So, dia beri kamu minus RE as 10. So, nanti dalam reaction, I have to teach you as well. Daripada soalan banyak panjang tu, you have to learn how to synthesize the information into symbols and number. Okay, macam contoh case ni, ayat dia, given the rate of disappearance of A as 10 more liter per minute. So, you have to know the means negative RA, 10 more lit per liter minute. Okay. So, then they want to find what? They want to find first, rate of formation of A. Meaning, nak cari apa? Positive RA. Second, rate of disappearance of B. Negative RB. Third, rate of disappearance of C. Negative RC. Third, the rate of formation of D. Positive RD. So, kamu tengok, dia dah beri kamu information. Dia nak kita, based on minus RA, they want us to find minus, positive RA, negative RB, negative RC, positive RD. Okay, so how do we do this? Right. So, we start with minus RA. Saya takut saya terlajak masa. Okay, belum lagi. Negative RA, 10. Okay, daripada soalan kan? Okay. So, they want us to find positive RA. Dia beri kita negative RA, dia nak kita cari positive RA. Positive RA itu apa? Rate of formation of A. So, 
you want to find rate formation of A, when you check the chemical equation, A disappear. A does not form. They don't agree to one another. So the number become negative. Okay, then darab dengan stoichiometric coefficient juga. So dalam case ni jadi A per A lah. Sebab kita nak cari untuk A, right? So A per A multiply with minus RA which is 10. So you will get positive RA as negative 10. Okay, so logic lah. Negative RA 10. Positive RA, negative. Positive RA become negative 10. Okay, so kita pergi susah sikit. Rate of disappearance of reactant B. Negative RB. Okay, kita nak cari negative RB. Rate of disappearance of reactant B. Okay, so then equals to. Number tu, before kamu nak kira, establish dulu. Positive ke negative number. So, rate of disappearance of reactant B. So, in this example, B does disappear, agree to one another, the number become a positive number. Then, multiply with the stoichiometric coefficient, B per A. So, for the case of B is 1, for the case of A is 2. So, it become positive 1 over 2, multiply with minus RA, which was given in the question as 10. So 10 multiplied by 1 over 2, you will get 5. So rate of disappearance of B is positive 5. Okay, so then go to C pula. Negative RC, rate of disappearance of product C. They want us to find minus RC, rate of disappearance of product C. Okay, so minus RC equals to number 2 positive ke negative. Since Rate of disappearance of product C. C does not disappear. C is formed because C is product. The number is a negative number. They don't agree to one another. The number becomes negative. Then multiply with C per A. The stoichiometric coefficient. So stoichiometric coefficient for C is 2 from the chemical equation. Stoichiometric coefficient for A in the chemical equation is also 2. So 2 over 2. Multiply with minus RA. Don't forget, kita kena multiply dengan minus RA. Then you will get as negative 10. Right. So for last one, positive RD, rate of formation of product D. So kita nak cari rate of formation of product D. So rate of formation, uh, positive RD. And then you check the number pula. Okay, the number in this case, product D, rate of formation of product D. D indeed is form, they agree to one another, the number become positive. Then multiply with stoichiometric coefficient D per A. So the stoichiometric coefficient for D is 1, the stoichiometric coefficient for A is 2. So 1 over 2, multiply with minus RA which was 10, you will get your minus RD, eh, sorry, positive RD as 5. Okay, so I hope you understand the concept. Positive R, negative R. Concept number pula, positive ke negative. Then kena paham pula concept. Uh, the rate of other species, it must be calculated based on minus RA. Because usually from literature, from experiment, kita akan determine dahulu minus RA. So daripada minus RA itu baru kita boleh dapat rate of disappearance of formation of other species. Kenapa? Kenapa? Okay, sempat lagi, sikit lagi. Okay, right. Okay, so finish one uh, headache. Okay, second headache pula. Right. Now, let me introduce pula batch and flow system. So, kamu kena faham dalam reactor, uh, in reactions or reactors, they are divided into two different system, which is the batch system and flow system. So, to understand it easily, batch system means a closed system, meaning... Before the reaction takes place, at minute zero, I'll put in my raw material. Okay, I'll put in the raw material at minute zero. Okay, once I start my clock for the reaction, nothing goes in, nothing goes out. That's why it's called closed system. Masa tindak balas tu berlaku, nothing goes in, nothing goes out. Until after certain time, okay, let's say reaction tu dah habis, let's say uh, two hours, uh, let's say four hours, then only I will take up my product and my unconverted reactant. Always remember, tak semestinya reaction 100% uh, 
all your raw material is converted into product. Most of the time, the conversion is not 100%, meaning they are still unconverted reactant. So, to that is bash system. Okay. Flow system pula is an open system, meaning during the reaction, throughout the reaction, the feed will continuously feed to the reactor, flow into the reactor, and at the same time, the product and unconverted reactant will flow out. So, flow in, flow out continuously throughout the reaction. That's what we flow, always continuously flowing in, flowing out. So, automatically, it becomes an open system. Okay, so konsep ni kamu kena betul-betul faham sebab nanti design reactor dia jadi com completely two different branch. When we're talking about react batch, and we're talking about flow. Okay, so next one pula, I will teach you the basic equation that you will see in uh, reaction. Okay, so first of all, saya kena ajar kamu, I have to introduce you to the concept of uh, concentration and number of moles. Okay, so when you're talking about batch reactor, nanti kamu akan perasan dalam equation dia, batch dengan flow ni, dia ada uh, parameter yang berbeza ataupun ada uh, info that you use is different. Okay, so when we talk about batch, okay, batch reactor atau batch system, we will talk about in terms of concentration and number of moles. So I think by now you dah belajar chemistry, dah belajar CPP, you should know the uh, the relationship. Okay. In reaction, okay, concentration we use C. So depan ni bila kamu tengok concentration je, kita akan guna C, number of moles we use N. Okay, so you will use a lot. Don't worry, kalau sekarang kamu rasa macam banyak benda kena tahu, tak apa. Concentration dengan number of moles ni, you will use throughout the 17 weeks. So automatically, you automatically dah tahu dah apa dia. Okay, so C for concentration, N for number of moles. Okay, then kamu tahu kan, concentration is specific to the species. So meaning, kalau nak cari concentration of A, it become C subscript A. Nak cari concentration of B, C subscript B. Concentration of C, C subscript C, so on and so forth. Number of moles pun sama. So it become number moles of A, N subscript A. Number moles of B, N subscript B, so on and so forth. C ke D pun sama, N, C, N, D. Okay, next. Concentration number of moles ni pula, you know right, in the reaction, uh, they are, uh, they reacted and they form. Meaning, concentration and number of moles will change with the reaction. Okay, then kamu tahu kan naturally, when we talk about A, reactant A, okay, batch kan tertutup, okay, so meaning at minute zero, concentration dia, of course, takkan sama dengan concentration after reaction has taken place. Why? Sebab concentration number of moles ni will definitely decrease when reaction has taken place. So, it's no longer, you cannot, you can no longer just write as C, A and A. Sebab C, A and A ni tak sama pada awal reaction and akhir reaction. So, usually at initial uh, concentration or initial number of moles, meaning the concentration and number of moles before reaction takes place, we will put a not. So, it becomes C, A not. Dia bukan the not here, not or we say zero lah. You can say zero or we can say not. But normally, you will say the word not. So, when we say C, A not, meaning initial concentration of A. The not is to signify at minute zero to signify initial, meaning the concentration initially before the reaction takes place, we put it as C, A not. Then, concentration after Concentration during or after the reaction has taken place is what we call as outlet concentration or concentration during or after the reaction of A. So, we put it as CA. So, CA tak boleh jadi concentration at any time during the reaction or after the reaction. Beza dia dengan CA0, CA0 is before the reaction takes place. So, and A0 pun sama to signify the number moles of A before the reaction occurs or at minute zero. Not is to signify initial, to signify time zero. So, and a not. So, again, number of moles of A during or after reaction, we put it as an A. Okay, so apa perkaitan C A not, N A not, C A and A? Kamu kena faham. Perkaitan dia, if you want to find at initial, 
Both kena not. So, CA not, NA not. CA, NA. Kamu tak boleh buat CA not cari NA or C, NA cari NA not. Cannot. It must be CA not, NA not. CA, NA. So, what is the relationship? Actually, concentration equals to number moles per volume. So, kalau kamu tak boleh ingat pun, kamu ingat tak unit concentration kan? Mole per liter, mole per dm cube, kilo mole per liter. Tu miss what? Mole per volume kan? So, that's why you get the equation. Uh, concentration is number of moles and per V. Okay, so kamu kena ingat. Kalau nak cari CA0, it become NA0 per V. Nak cari CA, NA per V. Or in other words, nak cari initial concentration, initial number of moles. Nak cari initial, uh, nak cari initial, uh, nak cari outlet concentration, outlet number of moles. So this is how you find the relationship between CA0 and NA0. C A and N A. Okay, so now it's already five twenty-five plus five. Okay, C K A. Right now, not to confuse you, pula. Now I go to flow system. Tadi batch kan? Kalau batch is in term of uh, concentration, number of moles. Okay. Now kalau flow system pula, kami ingat kalau flow system ni dia continuously means ah uh, continuously flow in, flow out. It must be based on time. So, kalau batch system tak ada based on time, flow system ni mesti based on time. So, what happen is, instead of using number of moles, batch kita guna N, number of moles. Kalau flow system, kita guna mole per time, molar flow rate. So, kalau batch, number of mole, mole sahaja. Tapi, kalau flow system dia jadi molar flow rate. So, now N jadi F. F is to signify molar flow rate. So, kalau tadi 10 mole, sekarang jadi 10 mole per second. Uh, 10 kilo mole per hour. Dia menjadi mole per masa. Flow ni mesti berdasarkan masa. So, instead of using N, sekarang saya guna F. So, it become F A not F A. Meaning, F A not is initial molar flow rate or the molar flow rate before reaction takes place and FA is the outlet molar flow rate. The molar flow rate during or after the reaction has taken place. So, kalau batch, CA0, NA0, CA, NA. And then ada volume kan, berdasarkan volume. Kalau flow system pula, CA, uh, CA0, FA0, CA, FA. Then next, apa berlaku pada volume pula? Sama. Kalau batch is just volume. In flow, it become volumetric flow rate. Sebab continuous ni mesti berdasarkan masa. So, kalau batch, number moves, volume. Kalau dalam bentuk flow, jadi molar flow rate, volumetric flow rate. Halaju isi padu. Molar flow rate is halaju molar. How much mole per time? Halaju isi padu is how much volume per time? So, apa dia punya perkaitan? Perkaitan dia akan menjadi concentration equals to molar flow rate per volumetric flow rate. So, kalau tadi volume kita guna V, kalau volumetric flow rate kita guna epsilon. This is a Greek, uh, I think you learn symbol, right? So, this is actually epsilon but sometimes saya guna V jugalah. Tapi, to signify volumetric flow rate. Kalau saya cakap pasal batch, V itu adalah volume. Kalau saya cakap dalam flow, V itu adalah volumetric flow rate. Okay, so perkaitan dia become concentration per molar flow rate per volumetric flow rate. Then same concept, kalau nak cari initially, CA0 equal to FA0 per V0. Kalau nak cari outlet, jadi CA equals to FA per V. Okay, so then, kalau kamu perasan satu benda, okay, before I end today, okay, kalau kita nak cari uh, dalam batch, kamu perasan dia akan menjadi CA0 equals to NA0 per volume reactor. CA akan menjadi NA per volume reactor. Dia masih volume reactor. Initial atau outlet pun masih volume reactor untuk batch. Tapi bila flow, kamu perasan, saya dah tak guna, saya akan ada perbezaan antara V0 dan V. Means ada initial volumetric flow rate dengan outlet volumetric flow rate. Kenapa? Okay, kamu kena faham pula. Kalau bercakap mengenai volume uh, V, reactor volume, okay, dalam batch ni berdasarkan volume reactor. Kamu tahu reactor punya volume, isi padu reactor kamu tak berubah. Means kalau reactor kamu tu 10 liter, 10 liter sajalah. Your reactor does not shrink or expand. 
So initial volume reactor dengan final volume reactor is always the same. Sebab tu saya tulis per volume reactor untuk batch. Tapi untuk flow system, dia dah sekarang volumetric flow rate. Volumetric flow rate apa lah? Halaju isi padu. Okay. Kita, kalau batch isi padu, kalau flow isi padu per time, volumetric flow rate. Okay. Volumetric flow rate ni pula, kamu kena consider. Okay. Ni yang part yang kompleks sikit. Okay. Kamu bayangkan, kamu ada uh, isi padu kan, katakan kamu pump in 2 liter of uh, reactant A, 2 liter of reactant B. Halaju isi padu dia kan? Okay, uh, 2 liter per second of reactant A, 2 liter per second of reactant B. Okay. Kalau dia adalah liquid phase, kalau kita pump in liquid phase, 2 liter A, 2 liter per second A, 2 liter per second B, yang keluar daripada reaktor akan masih sama. Meaning it's still, let's say I put in 2 plus 2, 4, right? Means 4 liter per second of A and B yang akan keluar pada reaktor tu still 4 liter per second of reactant A and B ah uh, total volumetric ah uh, total volumetric flow rate tak semestinya A dan B sebab dah ada produk tapi dia punya isi padu dia masih sama kalau liquid meaning I pump in 4 liter per second I will still get a uh, uh, outlet as 4 liter per second if it's liquid phase tapi complex dia pula kalau dia adalah gas phase Kalau gas phase, tak semestinya how much you pump in volumetric flow rate will be equal to how much that it goes out. Okay, sebab tu kamu pernah belajar mass balance kan? So, in terms of liquid, volumetric flow rate dia in and out akan sama. Walaupun uh, masuk tu uh, reactant, keluar tu campuran produk dengan reactant, isi padu dia, total dia masih akan sama. 4 kalau 4 kalau liquid. Tapi kalau gas, not necessarily. Sebab gas, Dia punya volume, if you remember, is influenced by temperature dengan pressure. So, let's say you pump in 4 liter per second of gas yang keluar not necessarily 4 liter per second. That's why dalam equation ni, kamu akan ada perbezaan inlet volumetric flow rate dengan outlet volumetric flow rate. Sebab this is to cater for cases, especially gas phase, bila dia punya volumetric flow rate in dan out tak sama. Okay, so that's why in equation, kalau batch, CA0, NA0 per V, CA, NA per V. Tapi for the case of flow rate, flow system, CA0 is FA0 per V0 and CA is FA per V, which is volumetric flow rate. So means CA0 sama dengan inlet molar flow rate of A, initial molar flow rate of A kepada initial volumetric flow rate. CA refers to uh, molar flow rate, outlet molar flow rate of A per vol outlet volumetric flow rate. So this volumetric flow rate refers to all the compound in the system. Okay, nak cari concentration A berdasarkan molar flow rate A. Tapi volumetric flow rate tu berdasarkan semua molar volumetric flow rate yang flow in, either flow in or flow out from the system. Okay, so now it's already 5.32. Uh, I will stop. At this moment, I will continue back the class on Thursday. Okay, I'm so sorry I take a little bit of time. I will clarify again if you don't understand on uh, Thursday class. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone. I will see you on Thursday. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.